Daniel chapter 9 is without a doubt one of the most controversial passages used by messianics, Christians, missionaries, and others to promote the theme that Jesus or Yeshua had to come and die before the destruction of the second temple. We as the Jewish people, we as Israel, have rejected this for over 2,000 years for good reason. And I hope at the end of this presentation you will at least look into this. Let's read from a Christian translation what it reads. Daniel chapter 9, specifically verses 25 through 27. This is in a King James Bible. It says, Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to rebuild Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the prince shall be seven weeks and three score and two weeks. The streets shall be built again and the wall even in troubled times. And after three score and two weeks shall the Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary, and the end thereof shall be with a flood, and unto the end of the war desolations are determined. That's in a Christian, many Christian translations or messianic translations read just about the same. The Messiah, capital M. Let's take a look at a English Jewish translation, which many Jewish translations have this way of reading. Listen carefully. Listen to the difference. You shall know and understand that from the going forth of the word devar, not mitzvot, commandment, to return and to rebuild Jerusalem until unanointed prince. Mashiach means anointed. It does not mean Messiah. Ha Mashiach is the anointed one. Now, what the Christian translation did was capitalize, capital M. Only in Daniel chapter 9 do you find the only two instances where a Christian or Messianic Bible puts capital M for Mashiach. In every other place throughout their Bibles, Mashiach is translated properly as anointed. Only in Daniel 9 is it mistranslated as the Messiah, capital M. Just going to point that out there. Until unanointed prince, not the Messiah, will be seven weeks, and for 62 weeks it will be rebuilt, street and moat, but in troubled times. And after the 62 weeks, unanointed one, another anointed one, will be cut off and will be no more. The people of the prince who comes will destroy the city and the sanctuary, but his end shall come like a flood until the end of war desolation is accreed, decreed. Excuse me. Now, notice that the Christian or messianic spin says that he will be cut off, but not for himself. The Jewish translation from the Hebrew does not say that he will not be cut off. Oh, he will be cut off, but not for himself. It says specifically he will be cut off and will be no more. So again, another mistranslation, another changing of the wording from the Hebrew. It's not what it says. So, the Christians and Messianic claim that this is specifically speaking about Jesus or Yeshua, that he was supposed to be cut off before the, the destruction of the second temple. Well, let's take a look at what cut off means in the Hebrew scriptures. Is it a good thing or a bad thing? Is it a negative thing or not? Let's take a look. Exodus chapter 12, verse 15. Seven days you shall eat unleavened bread. On the first day you shall remove leaven from your houses. For whoever eats leavened bread from the first day until the seventh day shall be cut off from Israel. Numbers chapter 9, verse 13. But anyone who is clean and is not on the journey and yet refrains from keeping the Passover shall be cut off from the people. Psalms 37, verse 28 and verse 38. For Yehovah loves justice. He will not forsake his faithful ones. The righteous shall be kept safe forever, but the children of the wicked shall be cut off. Leviticus chapter 17, verse 14. For it is the life of the flesh. The blood of it is for the life thereof. Therefore, I said unto the children of Israel, you shall eat the blood of no manner of flesh. For the life of the flesh is the blood thereof. So whosoever eats it shall be cut off. Hosea chapter 8, verse 4. 
again speaks about being cut off in a negative way. Obadiah chapter 1 verses 8 through 10, cut off forever. It is never a term for something positive. It is always negative to be cut off. I'm just pointing that out. I'm not saying this proves anything, but it's never used in a positive or for people who are doing good things. It's a bad thing. Just wanted to point that out. It's very important. Now, what is going on in Daniel chapter 9? Most Christians and Messianics don't care. They don't read the whole chapter. But you who's listening, I know will do so. If you read the chapter in context, you will understand what Daniel is praying about and wondering about. First, he begins Daniel chapter 9 by saying specifically that I'm trying to understand the prophecies in Jeremiah, specifically Jeremiah chapter 25, verses 11 through 12. It says here, And this whole land shall be desolation and an astonishment. These nations shall serve the king of Babylon seventy years. And it shall come to pass, when seventy years are accomplished, that I will punish the king of Babylon. And that nation, says Yehoah, for their iniquity, and the land of the Chaldeans, and will make it a perpetual desolation. Meaning he's going to destroy Babylon. Babylon will be no more. Also, Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 10. For thus says Yehoah, after, then after the seventy years be accomplished at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word, devar, not commandment, toward you, in causing you to return to this place, meaning Israel, Jerusalem, to rebuild the temple. Now, if you read Daniel chapter 9, this is specifically what Daniel is trying to figure out. Again, he begins by saying, I am living here in Babylon. The Persians have taken over. Read it for yourself, Daniel chapter 9. Persia has taken over, and they're still in Babylon. And he's wondering what's going on. Read the whole chapter for yourselves. He specifically freaks out and wonders what's going on. I can't understand. I'm reading the scroll of Jeremiah. And we're still in Babylon. Nothing has happened. Babylon was destroyed, yet we're still in Babylon. We want to go back to Jerusalem, rebuild the temple. What's going on? So he basically is freaking out and thinking that something went terribly wrong. We are under a curse, he says, the curse of the Torah, which thinks, well, he believes it's going to be seven times the punishment because of their disobedience. So that's the focus of his prayer. So he starts to do one of the greatest prayers ever to God himself and begging to, for, for the forgiveness of the people of Israel. Begging for forgiveness. For him to turn his face towards Israel and hear their cries and forgive them for his sake as well as the people's sake. That's the point. Now, another point I want to make is, who is the anointed one? Now, in the Hebrew, it says Mashiach, which means anointed one. Now, what the Christian and Messianics did was they changed the translation to make it the Messiah, capital M. One Messiah and one time period. Whereas the Hebrew translation specifically says there's two different periods of time and two Mashiachs, two anointed ones. So let's deal with the first anointed one. You may ask, well, who is this anointed one that you're talking about? We see... In Isaiah chapter 44, verse 28, thus says of Cyrus, He is my shepherd and shall perform all my pleasure, even saying to Jerusalem, You shall be built, and to the temple your foundation shall be laid. Isaiah chapter 45, verses 1 and verse 13. Thus says Yehoah to his anointed, to Cyrus. In verse 13, I have raised him up in righteousness, and I will direct all his ways. He shall build my city, and he shall let go my captives, not for price nor reward, says Yehoah of hosts. Now, another point I want to state is that Ezra, the book of Ezra, was removed from being after Daniel. In Tanakh, in the Hebrew scriptures of a Jewish Bible, Ezra always comes after Daniel and always has been placed after Daniel. The Christian Bible does not place Ezra after Daniel. And I'm going to show you why it was moved. It's actually thrown to the back of the Bible. Let's take a look at Ezra chapter 1. This is why it was moved. Listen carefully. 
now in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, Cyrus, king of Persia, that the word devar, not commandment, of Yehoah by the mouth of Jeremiah might be fulfilled. Yehoah stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, that he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom to put it also in writing, saying, Thus says Cyrus, king of Persia, Yehoah, Elohim of heaven, has given me all the kingdoms of the earth. He has charged me to build him a house at Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Who is there among you of all his people? His God be with him, and let him go up to Jerusalem, which is in Judah, and build the house of Yehoah, Elohim of Israel. He is the God which is in Jerusalem. If you look at a Christian Bible, Ezra's not after Daniel. It's placed to the first books, after the Torah. So this is something that the church did. The church changed it. We have in the Tanakh, the Hebrew Scriptures, preserved by our sages. We have the Torah, the prophets, and the writings. So we have the Torah, the law, the prophets, scolding Jerusalem, scolding Israel to get their act together. And then we have the reparation, the healing in the writings, Job. Psalms, Proverbs, this is how you fix your relationship with God and come back to God. The Christian Bible was put together by the church to say no. Torah, the writings, Psalms, Proverbs, and so on. Then the prophets, then the spankings. How do you repair this? We don't want you to go to Psalms and Proverbs. Oh, no, 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 no. We want you to go to Matthew. Do you understand? That's what happened. Read Daniel chapter 9. All of you watching, don't believe me. Read Daniel chapter 9, the whole chapter, and ask yourself, what is Daniel upset about? What is he praying about? What is he not praying about? I will reveal one thing. He is not asking ever, when is the Messiah going to come? When is he going to die? You'll never find that. That's not what he's interested in. He's trying to figure out why what Jeremiah prophesied is not coming to pass. He misunderstood the books, the, the scroll of Jeremiah, because he conflated two different time periods. He thought that immediately after Babylon was destroyed, immediately they were going to go back to Jerusalem to rebuild the temple. But it wasn't happening. So he thought in his mind, oh my God, we are under a curse. It's going to be seven times the suffering, seven times punishment because of our disobedience and rebellion against God. So he prays for God to forgive them, to look upon them again and consider them because they are a scorn, a mockery of the nations. That's what he's talking about. Read it for yourselves. So you know, based on the reading from the Hebrew, that the anointed one who gave the decree, the word, Davar, was Cyrus. And we have passages that show that, yes, Cyrus is the anointed of Elohim. Now you might ask, who is the second anointed? The second anointed is an anointed class, which would be the priesthood, which would have been wiped away after the destruction of the second temple. There was no priesthood anymore. Like a flood, it was destroyed. We know in 70 A.D., at the end of the Great War, it was total destruction. Total destruction of the temple. Troubled times. Built in troubled times. Well, we know that Israel, in Jerusalem, the temple was rebuilt and it was under Roman occupation. The Romans were under complete... I mean, excuse me. Israel was under complete dominion of the Romans. It was troubled times. Over 100,000 Jews were crucified slaughtered throughout history under the Romans. So yes, it was very troubled times. So again, you have to have understanding, you have to read in context, you have to understand what was done. This is probably without a doubt the most corrupt mistranslation ever done to our holy scriptures. Now I know some of you will not agree with me, but again, I always tell everyone, you don't have to believe me, go look it up. Mashiach does not mean Messiah, capital M. It means anointed. And we saw who the anointed was. 
And we know now, you who's watching, why Ezra does not follow Daniel in a Christian Bible. Because the church removed it. They didn't want you to read Ezra after Daniel and see, oh wow, this is what Daniel was talking about, just in case you weren't clear enough by the actual context of the chapter. Ezra tells you, just like Jeremiah predicted, he wasn't talking about the Messiah. No. Again, that Jeremiah might be fulfilled, the mouth of Jeremiah might be fulfilled. Yahweh stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, and he made a proclamation to rebuild Jerusalem. So I hope this was helpful. I have other videos on this subject as well, but I wanted to make this video to clarify this. Read the whole chapter of Daniel chapter 9. Context, context, context.